Dr. Homebrew is brought to you by Five Star Chemicals, providing safety and cleaning supplies for brewing, distilling, and winemaking at fivestarchemicals.com. Dr. Look. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Dr. Homebrew. You know what time it is. It's Dr. Homebrew time. And indeed. <laughs> it's indeed a Dr. Homebrew time. Stand aside, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Got a problem with my palate. It's Dr. Homebrew time. Hey, everybody. We fixed your palate. Mm-hmm. Got Brian here. We got Doc here. Hi. And, hey. of course, I'm here. That's what else JP. am I going to do? Hey, JP. I could spend my time playing Overwatch. I've been playing Overwatch, Blizzard game. Mm. Wow, how, how can you play Overwatch, sir? Because it's not even out yet. <laughs> because I'm in the beta. Oh, I'm awesome. in the close beta. I'm an amazing person. You got beta? And I got beta, Bo. How'd you get that, man? I'm awesome. And I'm in the new World of Warcraft alpha test. But uh, I just, I don't, I don't know. You're not supposed to talk about that stuff, though. Won't they fire you? No. No, that oh. just, no, just gives me. them more hype. He just can't talk about the game. Oh. Right. No, I can talk about the game, I think. Okay, tell I us all not, about it. I didn't have to sign anything. Yeah. Oh. It's cool. Welcome to Dr. Game Brew. Nerf for Nerf Nerf. Nice, man. Yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I've played enough Overwatch over the last like month that it should be my job. I should get paid to play that fucking game. I love it. It's, a, the, it's an amazing game. If so, you have kids or if you're a gamer... Overwatch. I'm fucking telling you now. Overwatch. 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 Mm. Isn't homebrew another word for like somebody who writes code at home and makes their own games? Yeah. You yeah. Make a homebrew game. Yeah. We should I do an so. episode with just that. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> then no matter what you search on, in, in Google or Bing, it may come up. Yeah, us. Yes. So Everybody when, comes when can to us. Layman get this Overwatch you speak of. <laughs> Shut up, guys. Let's talk about beer. <laughs> you I've can't. got an Atari 2600 oh. at home, and I exclusively play that. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously do. I don't know where mine went. Uh, you can you can buy Overwatch. It'll be on PS4 and, you know, Windows and Xbox as well. I have PS3. <laughs> no, oh, God. You are so out of it. You are not cool. Actually, when Parker comes home, he'll bring his PS4 home. He'll bring his PS4. Overwatch, dude. Yeah. It's a first-person shooter. Um, based. Will it look good on my TV? It'll look great on your TV. <laughs> Doc's entire wall is a TV. I just ordered Miss Pac-Man and uh, <laughs> Qbert. I think they just uh, didn't, like didn't Atari blocks, just know. release like 100 titles for PC? Like their old Atari, like get all missile that, yeah. command and shit, cool. like yeah. that. My you favorite. That stuff. It's pretty oh, cool. Actually, right? uh, but it doesn't play the same as Centipede when you have was it. my favorite. Centipede? Yeah. No, well, I could centipede. never dig on Centipede. Oh, I was so centipede good, rules, yeah. It rules, doesn't it? Yeah. Black my brother scored like 200,000 on that yeah. recently. Oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. Really good at that. It's been a lot of quarters. I liked the arcade version too. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Trackball. 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 Yeah. Because the Atari trackball sucked, but it did, it does the arcade suck. trackball was good. But you know, I'll tell you what doesn't suck. Five Star Chemicals. Huh? Our sponsor, Five Star it. Chemicals, has been with us since day one. This is their show. I haven't heard of that We game. just run it, man. Oh, wait, yeah. But it's uh, it's their show, and uh, you know what you need to do to keep us on the air is uh, support Five Star. And I'll tell you what, honestly, it's really easy to do. I'm not just blowing smoke because they're a sponsor. Uh, if you go into my uh, you know brew uh, my brew area, such as it is, you will find PBW and Star Sand mm-hmm. and a white scrub pad, <laughs> and that's it. That's all you're going to find for cleaning, man. It's because that's all you need. And, and and it's 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 really easy to talk about Five Star because... I use it exclusively. They totally and I have since since they came on the market. Totally changed my brewing. If you guys remember the dark ages, uh, bad stuff like chlorine, iota four, and bleach. Yeah, uh, do I rinse this? Do I not rinse this? How do I get this clean? Dishwasher cleaning your oh, bottles, God, dude. It was, right? It was, it was horrible. You yeah. knew you had to get it clean. You just had no good way of doing it. And right. then these guys came out with it, and it's like, wow. 
This is not simple. <laughs> right. It is. That's what they've done. They've taken yeah. it. They've streamlined it. And the chemistry is there to back it up. That's it, the it, thing. It made people that couldn't brew beer because they had no idea what sanitation or clean was. Yeah. To people that actually could brew. Right. It just made it so simple. Absolutely. I agree. Even me. It improved my brewing. Right. Because you never really knew. The other hand, e- even if you mix the iota four properly. Right. Did you leave it in long enough? Did it get all the gunk? Uh, but the PBW it stained will, everything, including your hands. Yeah, P- no. right. PBW will penetrate the organic right. materials, mm-hmm. and it will kill the things. I, these, it just these, will kill these, it. These twenty-one-year-old new brewers that come out, and all they've ever known is, you know, five-star chemicals. Easy stuff. Right. And the internet has always existed, and there's always been <laughs> running water and indoor toilets. Yeah, it's, right. it's fucking ridiculous. And these antibiotics kids these days. Yeah, and no Tinder. Yeah. Whoa. I know. Swipe left. Can you imagine? Anyway, check them out. <laughs> FiveStarChemicals.com. Please, people, seriously. Just contact do it. them. Just Tell them you're a fan it. of the show and thank them for supporting us. Uh, run into them at NHC also and talk to them. Any questions you have, any whatever, man. Uh, they're nice people. They're lovely people and they support the show and you should support them. Okay. I'm going to get Eric on the line because Eric has been patiently waiting. Patient Eric? This poor guy. Patient Eric. Um... You know, true he to is form. our patient, actually. He is our patient. Ooh. Excellent. His Shrek. beer is our patient. Brian, you want to crank us out a couple beers here? Do you need another one? Yeah, yeah let's pour that cold one. Exactly. Eric, are you with us? I am with you guys. Perfect. How are you, man? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Not too bad, man. We're good. sitting we're sitting in a bar talking about beer. It's pretty good. Talking to you. I mean, doesn't get better than that, right? <laughs> well, it could get a little better. Well, JP is here. Yeah, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's been half of the opening segment talking about games. <laughs> well, look, I like games. Plus JP. Nope. All right, Eric, how long have you been homebrewing, man? Um, about five years now, I guess. Okay. Uh, I have I have my wonderful wife get me a, a you know kind of a Midwest brewing kit with extract, and then um, got obsessed with it and jumped right into the all grain brewing after about five batches, I guess. Okay. And all right. Then, Grew, grew an obsession with stainless steel. It's like draining all my money now. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta that'll find happen, a way to man. Get it for a buck a pound. Yeah, that'll happen. So you sent us a pale ale. Now this is uh, all grain, I imagine, all that kind of stuff. It is, yes. yes. Okay, uh, is this your first attempt at a, at a pale ale, or have you done this before? Um, I it, it's my first attempt at that particular recipe i've kind of dabbled around a bit on um, kind of learning the grains that i like a bit more so uh first attempt at that recipe not at a pale ale before though oh okay so this is a new a new recipe specific right exactly okay yep yep all right well cool maybe we can uh give you a couple pointers here brian. i'm really hoping for it <laughs> perfect uh all right brian let's uh let's let's try to dial eric's um pale ale in man yeah um so the fill was slightly low we noticed on the bottle but it's uh that we can forgive that as long as it pours correctly and everything so sometimes you do get a little foaming when you fill uh, did you fill it off a keg or yeah it was a yeah. keg on the uh, um beer gun yeah uh I'm kind of experimenting with that, trying to figure out to to make that thing work just right. So yeah, yeah. it's good carbonation, right? Like, like we always say, cold, cold, cold. Yeah, <laughs> you know, move to Minnesota. <laughs> Only bottle in January. <laughs> outside, it's Houston, man. Yeah, the bottles get warm quick. Yeah, they do. So do. yeah, but uh, aroma wise, it's got a uh, kind of medium level hop aroma. Uh, it's kind of some medium light pine and some pretty substantial citrusy. Aroma is dominating. Um, a little earthiness below that. The malt is low and 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 bready, but there's a little bit of carameliness in there, kind of supporting and and balancing. Um, but I'm, you know, as the beer warms, I'm getting a little more of the malt. We judged it a little colder, and we're tasting another sample after a while. I was sitting here in the studio and BSing, um, so it's a little warmer now, and and a little more of that malt comes through, which is is fine, but it's yeah, maybe a little heavy. But uh, I'm getting some uh, kind of medium fruity esters, a little bit of a 
I don't know. If, let me know if you guys taste, get the same thing, but kind of a juicy fruit kind of ester, like a, a juicy fruit chewing gum kind of. In the aroma? Yeah, just kind of a mixed well, fruit bowl. Especially in this this, this new one. Yeah. Juicy fruit. Fruit stripe. Fruit not stripe juicy gum. fruit. Fruit stripe Okay. Gum. Yeah. Fruit stripe yeah. gum. That's we're, a good one. we're getting brand specific because yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, Man, I used to go to. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know, it, it, look, it's late. And I've had some beer. Um, I used to go to Kmart with my mom because you know, who, you know, who didn't go to Kmart you got in the there, 80s? She couldn't leave you at home. Well, well me, let's look. My my behavioral problems aside, and every time we go, she would have to buy me a pack of fruit striped gum. I fucking love this aroma. No, oh, yeah, I see. I do too. Yeah. Uh, my kids hate it. They think that fruit striped <laughs> gum. Tastes like horse's ass. <laughs> horse. I grew up on it too, like you did. I love it. Yeah. JP would cry until his mom bought him the fruit strike. That's true. Well, he wouldn't even leave the house until she promised him that. <laughs> yeah. no, I was better back then. All right. Sorry, um, continue, Brian. I, I feel like I got just a hint of a um, kind of a clove like or a spicy phenolic in the nose, too. Um, but there's no di- uh, DMS or Dassel or any, any other funky stuff in there. It seems like the fermentation is pretty clean. But um, the ester is kind of, or the the phenolic is kind of poking out a little, a little oddly, and I'm kind of sensitive to those, so it might just be really light. But uh, anyway, appearance wise, has a nice deep golden color. It's, it's also very brilliantly clear. Uh, and it has a mix of, of finer and larger bubbles, and and the head sticking around fairly well. So I like the appearance a lot. It's it's on the dark side for pale ale, but that's fine. Uh in the flavor, I tasted it and I got a somewhat of a biting bitterness up front. The aroma was inviting, and then I tasted it, thinking, "Okay, this will be like maybe a, a firm malty kind of, you know." It, it smelled kind of like a, a a little heavier than a, than your typical pale ale, or it's like kind of a modern pale ale, I guess you could say, because they're almost IPAs now. But um, in the in the flavor, I definitely got a little more bitterness than I wanted. And it detracted from the pleasant qualities that's going on, you know, that are echoing the aroma. The nice citrusy, piney, hot flavors are there, uh, but they seem lower because of that. So it, it's pleasant, clean, seems like pretty clean ale for me. I get a tiny hint of phenolic, but not not too distracting. Um, bitterness does stick around through to the end, and, and it just, you know, finishes out with that kind of rough bitterness in the end, too. And, and, and the, the balances to the hops... But I just, um, it's the bitterness part of the hops mostly, and in the flavor at least. You know, in the aroma, you get some of that nice citrus and pine and, and, um, and other characters, a little resiny. And then in the flavor, it's, it, it gets overtaken a little bit. So, but it's still, I mean, it's kind of fine, finer points in a way. It's, it's just kind of a balanced thing for the, for the flavor. Mouthfeel wise, medium bodied with medium carbonation. I did get kind of a moderate astringency in there, a little bit of a, a tanniny, um, you know, like chewing on grape skins kind of feeling in the in the mouthfeel. Not any real warmth or any any kind. Of, it's not really creamy or smooth, but uh, it's just um, yeah, the carbonation is kind of medium. I already said that. Okay, yeah, mouthfeel is <laughs> kind of where it should be, but just a little astringent. Overall, I thought it was a really promising pale ale, kind of a modern modern take on it with the. Uh, the hops being a lot more forward than, say, a Sierra Nevada pale ale or, you know, some of the more classic stuff. But, um, you know, hops on overdrive a little bit, but uh, also the bitterness on overdrive, and it kind of dominates the flavor and takes over, uh, keeping this beer from expressing its full potential. Um, <laughs> if you have a fine beer here, I would just dial that back, and you have a pretty pretty nice um, pretty nice beer. And maybe check out what's going on with that, that light phenolic. If it creeps up more as it as it ages, and and you notice some, um, even a band aid or a, an adhesive strip kind of flavor or, or aroma in there, then it's something's getting away in there. But um, it, it may or may not be. It might just be a fixed little light phenolic in there that's that's distracting me a little bit. But I gave it a thirty one. I thought it was a very it's a it's a very good beer, pleasant drinking pale ale. Just a little a little bit of balance issues for me mostly. Okay, perfect. Docker. Hola. Hello. Good. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Good. How are you? Awesome. Um, so I've had your beer twice today. Uh, <laughs> once at home, once here. Uh, at home, I, it was a little colder temperature. 
I got to control things. <laughs> Unlike here. Uh, if you hear him gritting his teeth, that's why. Uh, the, here, a lot warmer. Uh, a lot different beer. I'm hmm, just really? I'm, try, I'm trying to go over my head why it's such a different beer at a warmer temperature. Mm-hmm. It's, it's probably because I'm horrible at bottling beer. I think that might be it. Oh, now I was already going to get into that part. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, me, let me get to the end of that part. Uh, but but definitely it, it really changes a lot. Uh, just with the temperature change, where it shouldn't change that much. Yeah, I mean this is you know English, you know. 55, 58, maybe? Think? Whatever 60. you want. Okay, good. Okay. We're not drinking right. English beer, though. No, we're not. We're not. Exactly. How serve this hey. enough for so, you? Okay, so let's, let's, let's kind of do the rundown. In, in, in for, an ideal world, I'd have, I'd have it in the fridge, and I'd have somebody able to go out and get it, but I don't. So. And then too cold, and then let me warm it up? <laughs> right. Yeah, good. Yeah. So, I had to hire that Bevo back. She always pops in with interesting things to say and, like, puts you in your place a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's true. This is what you get, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Get her hey, back. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a big shot. Okay, so <laughs> so anyway, so let's uh, go with the yeah. It was a low fill. Okay, so you got to work on that beer gun a little bit. Uh, <laughs> just jabbing you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I got malty. I got a lot of caramel in this thing. Uh, the new one smells a little more oxidized, uh, a little more phenolic, which is really coming out. But what I mean by the new one is like the uh, the warmer one that I've got right in front of me, uh, more than the one that was uh, more at the proper temperature that I had this afternoon. Uh, I get a little bit of solvent there, uh, some sweet alcohol in the nose. Um, appearance is great. I mean, this thing is brilliantly clear. Uh, nice copper color. The head falls fairly fast. Uh, the color is perfect. Really nice color. Um, Flavor-wise, no diacetyl. Again, I get the sweet alcohol kind of in it. Uh, maybe possibly uh, brewing a little too hot. Uh, nice malt, though. If not, maybe a little too caramelly. Uh, again, I get slight staling in the flavor, some oxidation. Uh, some grassy notes, maybe from... Late hopping, dry hopping. Okay. Uh, yes. My main issue here is the lingering bittering. It's just there. I mean, this is why I don't this like is- a lot of hoppy beers because it's it's not the hoppiness. It's it's that lingering bitterness that's still stinging my tongue. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's 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 it's, it's that it just keeps on going. So in this, you want something to dry that off and, and kind of. I, I don't want it to be there in the first place. Yeah. I just I want it to be there to kind of to, to try to dry dry out moment. that dry out that finish. Okay. And then be done. Okay. I don't want to just keep being bitter and bitter on my tongue. Right. And that's that's probably the biggest distraction from this whole beer, is is that lingering bitterness. Um. Uh, and. Again, that's my biggest thing with yeah. you, you don't like hoppy beers as much. I like I like a good hoppy beer. No, I like hoppy beers. And, uh, I like I like but you hop like forward beers. Hop, I don't right. like bitter yeah. beers. Right. Yeah. Where they just my tongue's dead. Sometimes it's surprising when you look at a recipe for a really good hoppy beer to see how much of the hop addition is in the late. It, it's like more than you know, more than half a lot of the right. time or you yeah. know, even for an IPA. And you know whether you need it, I would back off on whatever you got to do to make this thing not lingering bitter, because up to, up front it's it's great. Yeah, uh, it's just that the distracting part is the fact that it just keeps on going. So, uh, but you know the mouth feels actually really good. Nice middle of the road mouth feel. It's not too dry. It's not too sweet. I kind of really like that. Uh, nice beer overall. Um, Maybe a bit past his prime, but that could be your bottling technique. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the lingering bitterness is distracting. Uh, no big faults. I didn't get a lot of issues with uh, DMS, diacetyl, or any or any of the other you know big bad faults at all. I think it's more of a balanced thing in this whole thing. Uh, so you're doing all that really well. Um, I would say not enough middle hops. I like mm. I like I really like the smell and I like the flavor of hops, so I would rather have the big push be that bubble in the middle, 
and not at the end. That's yeah. why you and I get along so well when we drink beers, because I'm the same way. Yeah. I, yeah. I love the smell of it. I love the taste of hops. Mm-hmm. I just don't like the big, bad bitterness at the end. Right. Take, so, take half of that 60-minute edition and put it in at 20. Yeah. 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 Totally, right? Yeah. I mean, you have to drink it faster, right? Because eventually, you know, because those hops mm. kind of leave it'll, it'll, sooner, it'll, right? It'll yeah. still give you your bitterness. Your, your yeah. IBUs are going to come through. This anyway. isn't a beer that you want to age too much anyway. No, so. right. no, no. So, uh, you know, the balance is maybe a little bit too caramely. Uh, and they didn't hold up well to the, the temperature change. Uh, the other thing is going to be you getting better at your beer gun. Uh, because I, I, hmm. I do really feel that you got too much oxygen in all these bottles uh you gotta just it, you'll count you'll get it you'll deal with that beer gun even better purge it better purge it as you're pulling the stick out you got to be kind of purging it in a little bit otherwise you're going to come up with a short pour like you've got and when you pull pull the wand out yeah it's going to pull oxygen in so you got to go back in mm. and shoot the top again one more time with some some CO two, yeah. which you can with that beer gun. Yeah, uh, just so you don't pull pull that wand out in the void that, that makes it it pulls oxygen right in. It, that's that's one of the issues with the beer gun. But there's a way around it, and that's technique. Or just get you know cap on foam. Get the tap you the, you you want with it with a beer gun if you're you good at it. Okay, yeah. It's it's when you pull it out and you can see anybody with a sh- really short pour. It's because that volume was taken up uh, the by, displacement of by the, the beer displacement gun. of the beer gun. Okay. All right. So pull it up, shoot a little more beer in the end. That'll foam it. Yeah. And or and then shoot the CO two in it, and then cap it. And you know, it's just a little bit extra technique to do with that beer gun, and you won't have quite this this problem with it. But I, I do taste a little bit of oxidation on both both sets of beers that I had of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the kind of beer that you want to last longer than a, just a week or two to be on mm-hmm. its peak. You really got to knock out all the oxygen on it. It's a good yeah. beer. It's got a lot of nice hops in it, but it, it, it comes down to technique too. Okay. Bottling is a challenging thing. And and it really if you're going to enter competitions, you do need to master it. I like to cap on foam every time, right. I, but I do a lower tech method. I don't have a beer gun. I just do, you know, the filling wand with a little, um, uh, you know, um, rubber, whatever. I can't think of the word right now. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a filling wand. Yeah. 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 Call, it right with, grommet. Call it grommet. There you go. Grommet. Grommet. Yeah. yeah. I use I use a counter pressure or the beer gun. Depends on what kind of beer it is. So... But then sometimes, you know, with with my method, you might get more foaming, and the beer, the beer gun is good at controlling that. But then you, you can't, right. it's harder to cap so, on foam, so you need to, like Doc said, fill the fill the headspace. If with you're gold, capping so on too. foam, like Brian's talking about, you pretty much guarantee you're not going to have oxygen in there. But sometimes with the beer gun, you're not going to get enough foam to to fill that that headspace. Right. So that's why you purge. So a little bit. you got to be. No. A man of many techniques. It'll also right. help okay. use the amp covered that. You know the the, the oxygen absorbing caps. Yeah. All but, right. I think um, we've I think we've nailed mm-hmm. the bottling technique down. So generally, uh, I I like the beer. Yes. In general, even okay. for you know, uh, it, it was a really nice pale ale. I give it a thirty three. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Eric. What about his recipe? It's your turn for questions. Oh yeah, you want to go over the recipe, man? What were the malts in? Yeah. There? Sure. All right. Yeah. Um, no, I was really happy with the comments. Um, it sounds like I just need to shift things around a bit. Yeah. Uh, I've actually had that comment before. Is my my beers are a bit um, overly bitter and not enough hot flavor to them. Um, so that's something I definitely can adjust. So I appreciate that. Um, and that might be a taste yeah, so, thing for you. And you know, if your friends are like, "Wow, this is bitter and, and too malty," but you like it. Well, if you're not entering a competition, brew it for yourself. But, yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, so the, the recipe, you know, just uh, your basic two-row for the base malt, um, about 73%. Uh, I did Munich, about 13%, and then mm-hmm. Victory, about 13%. And that was my, that was my malt bill. Um, That's quite a bit of specialty in there. Yeah. Munich and Victory? 
Hmm. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Um, but Munich, that's Munich that's be, not normal. Yeah, but Munich, for paleo, Munich right? can be considered a, a base can. malt too. Yeah, but totally. But it's still like I, I try to keep all specialty stuff under fifteen percent, maybe under ten if I can help it. For a pale, okay. especially, okay. Yeah. Yeah. especially for a pale. For a pale okay. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Eric. Do you like those flavors of Munich and uh, Vienna? Was the other one? Uh, no, it's victory. Is victory. victory? I do. I like. Uh, not so much the flavor of victory, but I like the aroma of victory. I like that mm-hmm. kind of, um, if I could just get this magical blend of um, breadiness and hoppiness, yeah. that's kind of what I've been shooting for. Um, and so I, I feel like victory might be the method to get me there. Um, there is a bready thing, and, and, it, and it's good. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. The Munich is weird, but I think that's what's giving you that big mouthfeel. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Munich. Because to me, okay. it, at all. to me, honestly, it tastes like you left your extract in the boil kettle too long. Okay. Yeah. Like there's okay. a little, like a, like a, not burnt extract, but maybe scorched. Or there's, there's something going on made like a melanoidin thing, and yeah. maybe that's the Munich yeah. in there that I, I don't like. I cut the Munich out. Just <laughs> yeah? Cut, cut okay. the Munich out. Uh, I would leave your Maybe uh, like a C fifteen. Would you replace it with anything? No, no. I, I would uh, I would up your your two row. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would keep your victory because that's what you like, right? Leave, that, and that's the thing. Okay, leave that in there. Do what you like, and, but add a little bit of caramel malt, like like some fifteen. Okay, and uh, but try to keep all the. You know the the specialty stuff under fifteen percent. Yeah, because you want some sweetness in there because that's yeah. what's balancing the hops and helping that malt kind of carry through. Right. Um, I, I'd cut out the Munich all the way. Yeah, because it just the, the combination of those three malts and maybe the hops. I don't know. For me, it's giving like a little bit of a scorched, burnt kind of a thing. Yeah. And, uh, and Brian, then, do you get that? Yeah, a little bit. And sometimes the simplest of the recipes are, are the best, you know, yeah. like a little bit of this and just a, But since yeah. you, li- you like the victory, I would keep that in there and see how you like it and play, play with that amount a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then shift your hops around. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you don't need that much bittering in there. That's just. That's true. It, uh, you know, it's still, I haven't taken a sip in three minutes and I can still taste it on the far oh, back still, of my <laughs> tongue. My mouth is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah burning. It, you might also want to start, I mean, from the, the, the way your style is leaning, you might also want to start working with English pale ales and just do, do that, you know, take uh, that victory yeah. malt into oh, your yes. English pale ale and do an East Kent Goldings hop and make a good ESB or something with a floor malted crisp Maris Otter and, you know, do that, get that malt right, and that will be fun, you know. But um, yeah, if you, if you want to go that direction, but yeah. what what were the hops and what how much were there? And five gallons. Yeah, so the, the hops were. Um, I tried to get all my bitterness from uh, Magnum. I always feel like they were a bit cleaner, um, so I did a, a half ounce. Uh, which this is a five gallon batch, by the way. Um, half ounce at sixty. And then everything else was kind of later hot, um, mm-hmm. and it was announced each. I did a uh, Amarillo at ten, and then Citra at ten, and then uh, another two ounces of Amarillo at uh, five, and then uh, Citra at Flame Out, and then I dry hopped it with uh, Amarillo and Citra for about five days. Yeah, that's why I was tasting the grassiness a little bit, uh, probably from the for the dry hop. Yeah, it's only a half ounce of Magnum, but it's it could be like a 13%, 14% alpha yeah. to push it, your, it your, is, your IBUs. High, yeah, there might have been up. alpha. It's like a high, definitely a high bittering. Do you have a calculated for IBU for it, like 40, 50? Or? That's a lot. Um, so for the beer, it's about uh, 20, 20 IBUs con- yeah. contribution. But overall, from with all the hops all together, did it take it up to? Um. The overall, oh, the total IB is the beer, sorry. Yeah. Um, it was about 41 is what yeah. it calculated out to be. It's a little high. Is that high? Should it should have been in the 30s, it, like 35, 32. Up, it still seems like a lot. I meant upper 30s. Though, right? But it might, taste-wise, it seems like a lot more. Might be something just coming to from other things, a little, the, the astringency that I got in the mouthfeel. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you could either, you know, Put the magnums in half the time. You still get a lot of bitterness out of them, and yeah. they're, they're actually a pretty clean hop. It is a good hop to use. Yeah. yeah. So 
you try that at 30 minutes instead of 60, uh, you won't get quite the utilization, but you won't get you get a lot more out of it that way. Mm-hmm. Or or cut them in half, that kind of thing. Uh, just you just got to kind of cut down on that that lingering bitterness that's shift like it a, down. Yeah, yeah, shift it down. It's not, yeah, I mean, it's not way over the top it, like an IPA. It's just a little much for the for this. Yeah, it, I mean, honestly. It doesn't it, balance. I think if you, you know, if you if you cut the malts like we do, even if you keep the hops the same, it's still going to be a, a, a decent West Coast style pale ale. But I think if you want it, if you want a little more drinkable, then, you know, like Doc's saying, cut, the, cut that bitterness five points, maybe ten. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Ten. It's, see, it, it would take you a couple times because cutting that, cutting that, uh, that malt, you know, maybe need or, to, need, well, need to cut that bitterness yeah, more. Cutting the bitterness is going to make the malt seem sweeter too. So this uh, is yeah. Yeah. If you're going to yeah. cu- if you're going to cut out the Munich, like we said, you need to really cut back on that bittering. Yeah. When uh, you when you cut the Munich out, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. uh, that's going to that's going to take a lot of the balance out of there. Is that sweet Munich? So, Eric, do you have any questions for the for these fellows? Um. Yeah, I think I think that was good. Um, I just wanted to run through my um, bottling recipe or bottling procedure real quick. Okay. And, yeah, go for it. Uh, just because you guys picked up a lot of um, oxidation, so I wanted to cut that out. So my typical deal is um, I I haven't been freezing the bottles at all, but you know I do the PBW to clean them, okay, um, and then star sand to sanitize them, drain them out. And then uh, stick the beer gun in and let it overflow. And then when I pull the wand out, and I cap it. So it's like maybe I pick up oxygen that way. Yeah. Um, do you have a uh, – I, I have a, a bottle rack. So I PBW everything, make sure they're clean. Uh, then star sand them, hang them upside down wet. Uh, you don't want to freeze them because that causes ice crystals. The ice crystals are going to make it foam like you don't know. Uh, you can. I've done it where I, I've taken the foil, put them over, put them in the freezer or refrigerator just to get them enough cold. That works okay. But if you just get the beer really cold that you're going to be be uh, filling with, you're, you're okay as long as the, the uh, bottles are at a decent temperature. So first thing you want to do is purge the bottle. Stick the wand down in there, hit it with the CO2, get all the oxygen out. Yeah. Fill it from the bottom. Fill it all the way up. As you're coming near the top, start pulling the wand back out. So you're still filling it, but pull the wand much nearer the top. That way you'll get almost a full pour in there, the full bottle. And then hit it. Just pull the – you got to pull the wand all the way out. Don't leave it in the liquid and then hit it with some CO2. Right. That way it purges it right there. You get a full fill, and at the same time, it's kind of a technique as you're, you're filling the bottle, you're pulling it back up. You blow that out. headspace out. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that way you don't have the thing at the bottom, pull the wand out, and now you got half a bottle almost. <laughs> right. So right. you really got to get the technique of pulling the wand up and out, but keeping it in the, in the liquid as you're kind of pulling all the way out. And just when you get right near the top, then you can hit it with a, just – a little blast of CO2, but not when it's in the liquid. <laughs> right, right. 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 Otherwise, otherwise, it just blows you it all. Spray it shoot the liquid you'll, out. You'll yeah. do it. No, you'll do it every once in a while. Yeah. You get, you'll yeah. hit the CO2 and you'll blast it out. You'll get you'll get messy, and then cap it right then. Once you get that down, you won't have any more oxidation problems. It's a right. it's a good product. I personally like to freeze my bottles, but I do sometimes have a little bit of foaming issues. Um, yeah. But you will because you get some ice I just, crystals. You know, in just there. dry them really good and t- be you know. Well, there's no problem putting them in there as long as you don't freeze them. As long as they're really cold, that yeah. helps too. And not all beers are the same. So if you've got something that's in the two, 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 three, four, uh, a CO two range, right. volume of CO two, you're not going to have an issue. You're going to yeah. try to do this Belgian double that we just had. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of trouble trying to get that in the bottle. Without getting the bottles really cold. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. It's, that thing will foam everywhere. Like you said, though, getting the beer really cold does help. If it's, if it's you know, 38, 40 degrees, right. it's going to make a big right. difference. So not just in the refrigerator. You've got to really put it put it in the freezer if you can, uh, the beer, right. the, the keg that you're filling from. 
That doesn't mean freeze it. I don't want slushiness <laughs> in there. But you you got to get it below, you know, what the refrigerator is going to do. Yeah. And the colder you can get it. But all beers are going to be a little different. Uh, ones with a lot of protein are going to foam a right. lot. The ones that are, are more carbonated are going to be more troublesome. I, yeah. It's almost like I've never met the same one twice. Well, because beer, you can go down to 32 or even 31. It's got right. alcohol in it, so right. it's not going to freeze not, it's at not those gonna temperatures. Freeze. Yeah. But some of them are just different than others. And also, once you get your lines going, yeah, they're going to be... Uh, a little different, so that beer gun's going to be warm at first. It's going to foam all over the place. But after right. about two or three beers, it's going to be cold. Your hands going to be cold. Everything's going to be cold. Everything's going to be cold. But it, they'll start flowing a lot better. So don't get. You uh, can chill the beer gun too. I mean, before yeah, you start, it'll chill it'll, everything, it'll, Eric. It'll, that's the thing. That's the secret. That's what we're saying over and over again. It'll chill itself. It'll keep be fine. everything cold, and you'll be all right. All keep, right. Keep at it and shoot it at the last minute. <laughs> right when you're pulling it out. All right, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> cool, thanks, guys. All right, cheers. Bye. All right, bye. All right. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to John. Uh, he has a double IPA for us, Doc's favorite. Actually, I really like this one. All right. Mm. It's Dr. Homebrew. Stay tuned, and we'll be back right after this. Tampa Bay has become a great destination for craft beer lovers with more than 60 breweries and counting, like Cigar City, Tampa Bay, and Coppertail Brewing. One of the newest breweries is Four Stacks Brewing Company in Apollo Beach. With a great selection of craft beer, including their own, Four Stacks brings the best of the West Coast to Florida. Enjoy beer from Russian River, Ballast Point, Stone, and Four Stacks' own IPAs from their plentiful 18 taps, including, of course, local and regional craft beers as well. It's like celebrating Tampa Bay Beer Week every week. Four Stacks hosts monthly homebrew club meetings, bottle shares, and partners with local restaurants for free food delivery while you enjoy your pint in their new tap room. Stop by Four Stacks Brewing and support the greater Tampa Bay craft beer scene at a brand new community-oriented independent brewery. Four Stacks Brewing Company in Apollo Beach, Florida, a monument to beer. Fellow BNers, this is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The Internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about homebrewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew, a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up. You might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Games. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, more beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. MoreBeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. MoreBeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to MoreBeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, More Beer social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to MoreBeer.com today and take advantage of The Buzz, The Forum, The Learning Center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. That's it. I've had it. I am never putting hops in my beer again. What? Why? It's just too ridiculous. Insane prices, stupid contracts, high shipping costs, crappy selection. Dude, you need Nico Brew. Nico Brew will rock your f***ing face right the f*** off your f***ing skull. Five dollars shipping to all 50 states, plus fantastic international rates get you low prices on Nico Brew's great selection of hops and more. Whether you're a home brewer, a pro brewer, or a home brew shop owner, Nico Brew 
Group can get you the hops you need in increments big and small, single orders, spot buys, or full contracts. And there's only one place to join the Uber Special Secret Elite Bare Bones Club where you'll get the best deals anywhere. Holy f***ing shit. NicoBrew.com. N-I-K-O-B-R-E-W. Nico Brew, your bare bones buddy in the brewing business. Examination. All right, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I believe we have John on Skype with us. John, are you here? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and hey, clear. How's it going, guys? Good, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for uh, sending in a beer. We have a, 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 a Kolsch, actually, to, to drink of yours probably next show. Okay. Um, That's awesome, though, right? Because we just judged the wrong thing. This isn't a Kolsch. No, this is no, definitely not a Kolsch. Sure. No, no, no. For next show. For next show. No, I got re- to redo my... Uh, you guys don't <laughs> worry about it. Well, and I would have brought the Kolsch, but uh, I broke a bottle. <laughs> Whoops! So oh, he drank uh, a bottle. Uh, the only one. Oh God! So uh, you know, we'll save it. I was like, shit! I gotta give something. To, I gotta whatever. Anyway, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, John, how long have you been home brewing, man? I've uh, been brewing for about four years. Um, okay. Started off, you know, like everyone else, five gallon extracts. Went up to all grain, and then uh, for the last year, I've been uh, brewing on a ten gallon Eherm system. Hmm. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, gallon, you know, I've got a 220 electronic control. Electric panel. Herms. Electric Herms. E-herm. Oh, E-herm. Ah. Okay. Gotcha. Ah. I heard knee Herm, and I'm like, mm. what? Is this some Eskimo E-herm? thing I don't know about? Eric Herms. <laughs> well, that's cool. Good. Did, did you build that thing? or? Yeah, yeah, I built it myself. I sourced all the parts and punched all the holes. And oh, look at you, handyman. Myself. Oh, that's cool. You didn't yes. fry yourself. No, no, luckily I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. I'm colorblind, too, so that made it even more <laughs> The, the yeah. dark gray wire goes with the gray wire. I think that schematic a little bit difficult, <laughs> didn't it? Oh, yeah, I had my wife double-check everything before I cut any wires. So it's her fault that something doesn't work. That's right. I blame her for that one. <laughs> Darn it, the spear turned out horribly. So you <laughs> sent us a double IPA. Yeah, it's your favorite. It's my yeah, it's my favorite. Now that Doc's here, it's his, it could be his favorite too. Yay! <laughs> have yeah. you have you attempted this style before? No, this is my first time brewing a, a double IPA. Okay, um, are you a big fan of the style? Or are you just trying to check it out? Um, I typically brew what I like to drink, so it's a lot of lower ABV. So the Kolsch, obviously, and yeah. uh, single IPAs, and the double IPA. I thought I'd try to try to brew and kind of expand my horizons. Okay. Just to expand your technique maybe a little bit and see just kind of how, how good of a brewer you really are? Yeah. You know, I kind of yeah. want to start to challenge myself and brew different beers that I wouldn't typically drink just to see if I can brew them even halfway decently. Okay. Well, they say uh, this one is 8.7% at 101 IBUs. Yeah. Those are uh, beer smith calculated uh, 101 IBUs. Not too bad. Well, Doc, why don't you go ahead and start us off with the double IPA? Okay, cool. Well, first I thought... Thank you, JP. <laughs> for, for throwing me at a double IPA. So, um, that being daunting, I still like took it on. Uh, uh, well, kudos so, to you, Doc. Yeah, I know. So, the first thing I did, you know, I looked at everything on the bottle. A uh, little bit of residue on the inside of the neck, but actually a really good fill. Uh, no, no problems with the cap. Uh, which is also, you know, it's always a good way to start. Uh, the aroma, I got a lot of malty sweetness with a lot of floral hop components. Uh, nice fruity nose, like just it just smelled fantastic. Uh, no harshness, no no astringency. It was actually really good just to keep, you know, the aroma going on that thing. Uh, I got a, you know more. Stone fruits, more. I didn't get a lot of sharp citrusy. I didn't get a lot of pine, uh, which is all kind of stuff I look for in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, color, nice color. 
a little lighter than yeah, copper color, yeah, but brilliantly clear. Uh, the head drops off real early, probably because of the high alcohol content. Okay. Uh, that's just kind of what stuff does. Something but, to look for. But, yeah, you know, I would have expected with 101 IBUs, this thing to be a lot more cloudy, uh, you know, mm. being the hop oils and just chunks of stuff in there. And I and I just didn't get it with this one. So, yeah, that, that one it looked really good. Um, mouthfeel, I really like that. It's just nice middle of the road, uh, not heavy, not sharp. It was, it was really good. Again, the main thing with this one I got was a lot of stone fruit, a lot of, you know, uh, plums, peaches, uh, just not citrusy stuff. And I, I really, really appreciated that one. Uh, really clean, no DMS, no diastole on this thing. Uh, it The, the mouthfeel was great, nice moderate mouthfeel. Uh the thing is not a, no lingering bitterness on this thing. It's all hmm. middle ground stuff. Yeah, it gets wrapped up pretty. Uh, yeah, it does pretty and, quickly. After and, it, a while. and it, it doesn't f- like finish off harsh or stringent. Yeah, but it just it just dries out, goes away, and then you want another sip. So it was it was actually really nice. Uh, kind of re- reminiscent of, for me of like Firestone Walker IPAs. Uh, oh wow. That's a good compliment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, I just, just you know, the, the just the fruitiness, uh, the, not the citrus bomb that I'm used to, mm-hmm. and uh, the big dry finish. Uh, I really, really like this beer. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. So I was, you know, I'll try anything. <laughs> uh, but Sometimes I was twice. so pleasantly surprised with the thing, man. Really good job. Thank so, you, man. I, that means a lot coming from you guys, especially yeah. you, Doc. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I, I scored this in a 46. I really, really wow. like this one. Yeah. Doc's been full of love with these uh, strong beers tonight. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was very pleasantly surprised with this one. Well done, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, Brian. It's your, uh, are you going to inflate John's I bubbly was horrible. Was or are you going to burst it? <laughs> sure. Oh, wait, no. Uh, wrong beer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Aroma-wise, yeah, just to get the, the very intensely pungent hops up front, as a, as a, a double IPA should be, notes of... I got more of kind of a tropical twist on it. Like, well, um, yeah, yeah, that gets yeah. the tropical, too. Yeah. Uh, pineapple, grapefruit, maybe a little tangerine kind of in there, but... Uh, you know, light citrus and and some kind of like an apricot like uh, aromatic, and it's just a really nice blend of hops. I don't know what was put in there. We'll 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 want to steal your recipe later, but um, <laughs> you know, just bright esters, uh, kind of apple like esters, and um, medium in in check, but just super pleasant esters too. Just a fruity a fruit bowl <laughs> with the yeah. esters and the the fruitiness of the hops in combination in tandem there it's a one two pleasant you know punch to the face there um low pretty malt just kind of supporting out of the way enough but there's there's something there that you know and with the alcohol that's obvious and evident that it, it you know it does balance the hops so it's not just a one trick pony no no bad stuff tms diesel blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> um, <laughs> appearance wise I liked the appearance um, the one thing I could knock it for a little bit uh, was and I, again I, I, I've i been rinsing the glassware with, with beer and this glassware has been rinsed uh, the head faded pretty quickly to a kind of a collar of fine white bubbles and that was it but um, otherwise it was just a bright very clear kind of a deep golden colored beer uh, with a low whitish head and just you know it disappeared. That's fine, whatever. It should stick around though. With that, the hop oils especially will usually tend to hold the head up a little better. Hmm. I don't know what happened. Was it doesn't seem like it's low carbonation. So um, there could be other things you could do to top to, oils to fix that. Positive, but maybe high alcohol negative. Maybe yeah okay. yeah that's true. And these glasses, and it is know, a, who knows a, what's going you know, on. If at eight point seven, it's it's up there. So yeah, I mean it's not yeah. the highest double IPA, but. You know, any double IPA should hold up somewhat of a head there a little better. Uh, flavor-wise, fresh, bright, hot flavors, as in the aroma, clean, tropical, and, and kind of apricot-like flavors. A little bit of citrus, uh, but, you know, it's balanced firmly to the hops, as this beer should be. High alcohol, but smooth. It's, it's not 
at all harsh. No, just no, really no, clean no, and no. smooth. Right, you did a nice job with your fermentation. Very clean ale fermentation. Finishes appropriately dry. It seems like you probably used some some sugars in the in the beer to to dry it out uh, and or an appropriately low uh, mash temperature. There's a little bit of a kind of a bubble gum ester in there. I found too in the flavor that was kind of cool. There's some really interesting flavors in this beer. The bitterness feels kind of medium high despite the declared 101 IBUs. So again, that's a calculated number. The reality is it's probably a lot lower than that. Uh, it's really hard to get 101 IBUs into a beer. Um, you know, even when Pliny, they measure there. It's, you know, <laughs> it's probably 70s or something, you know, 80. Uh, yeah, but uh, just pleasant hops and alcohol and balance uh, and the malt out of the way. And that sticks around in the aftertaste, and just it goes on for for days. There, you know, no diacetyl. It's not grassy, despite probably you know I'm sure it was dry hopped. Um, you kept that that plant matter limited in there, so it's not offensive. Mouthfeel wise, kind of right where it should be. Medium medium light body, um, medium warmth. Despite the obvious strength, it's it. You would think it would be higher with the eight point seven, but it's it's just fairly smooth. A little bit of warmth perking up there. And, uh, you know, smooth overall. No astringency, uh, medium carbonation, and, you know, overall, very enjoyable double IPA. Very fresh hop flavors. Nice job keeping the alcohol smooth, bitterness impression in check. And, um, you know, I like really would like to talk about the hop choices and just find out what you put in there because uh, there's some blends in there that are, that are working really well together, if it's a blend. If it's a single hop, but I want to know what the hop is, but, yeah. Um, and whatever you did with your water treatment is, is, you know, it seems like you're using really good water, really clean water. And with this beer, that's also vital because if you have too much, too much mineral, it's going to start to get harsh and play off of those hops in a nasty way. So, um, you probably have pretty low, uh, well, you know, you might have some, a little bit of sulfates or a little bit of something in there to, to play off the hops a little bit, but not, not poking up too high. Mm, okay. Um, and you could could improve the head retention, maybe a little bit of you know that wheat malt is one of the classic tricks. A little bit of wheat malt or something, a you know, quarter pound of of that. Or if you're doing any kind of a protein rest, you could limit that or get rid of that if if there's any. But I don't know, you know, it's just it's a minor point because it's a really enjoyable beer. I gave it a forty three. Wow! So thank you for sharing. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, all right, John. Well, you know, let's get to the nitty gritty, man. What hops did you put in this thing? Uh, okay, so I used. I, I I agree with you guys completely. I, did I think one one is 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 definitely a lot higher than what it calculated what it actually is. Yeah. But um, it was a ninety minute boil. Um, CTZ at ninety minutes, but a, a small amount. So thirty one IBUs, about an ounce and a half, and then um, another ounce and a half of CTZ at forty five minutes. And then um, a really heavy late late hop additions. Um, let's see. I, I used some Falconer's Flight at 15, about an ounce and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I whirlpooled with um, five and a half total ounces, which is a blend of Amarillo, Cascade, Falconer's Flight, and then a little bit of Summit. Yeah, now that you mentioned the CTZ, I'm getting a little bit of that kind of garlicky, yeah. oniony thing that they, they the, give. It's pretty cool. And the Falconer's Flight, uh, that's where the stone stuff kind of comes through. Mm. Um, kind of mangoey and. I get stuff. mangoey stuff, but what I'm getting overall is diesel. And so I was, really? I was convinced <laughs> there was Simcoe in this thing. Which I think is, isn't that the hop that everyone kind of whines about? That it's just, it's like diesel, that rope, you know, that, that what's that weird harsh rope that just smells like kerosene? Oh, Sicily? <laughs> yeah, there you go. It smells like that. Well, and that's no, the first actually, thing I that's got. A, that's I, a good. That's a good point because I did dry hop it with Falconer's Flight, Simcoe, Amarillo, and Citra. Yeah, there you go. Look at two that. ounces, two ounces of each for a total of eight ounces on the dry hop. And I, and I, from what I understand, if I learned anything from doing this fucking show for so long, <laughs> is that's just a hop derivative. You can't, you can't do anything to get rid of it. So I would drop the Simcoe. Yeah. Because I don't, I mean, for me, I don't like that flavor, and some people do. And maybe if you like it, then keep it. I don't care. But, but you got so much other good you have so stuff much, going on yes, in here. Exactly. That you should just 
Yeah, drop it. Because to me, that's such a detraction for from all of the other uh, good stuff you have going on, for sure. Yeah, you don't need it in there. I don't, okay. I don't hate it's, Simcoe. I think it's, it's terrible. I think it's, I mean, it's not terrible. I'm, I didn't <laughs> mean to JP say that. Time. I didn't mean to say that. It's, I don't it's hate Simcoe. I just I, don't, I dislike all Simcoe beer. If there's a you know I had an all Simcoe IP, I'm like, what is this hop and why would anyone ever want to use it? <laughs> but then you have Pliny, you have other beers that are blended with Simcoe, and it can it, it has its place. Yeah, but. Vinny's going to hop selection and weeding out yes. the, the batches that he doesn't he doesn't want at a, 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 a homebrew shop. You don't have that luxury, and you're kind of just forced to get what you get. Yeah, or smell it if you can. Well, yeah. smell it if you can. Maybe you know, put excuse me, make a, make, a, make a hop tea. Smell it if you can. Smell it. Bring smell the, the glove. <laughs> smell the glove. Bring the box out, again. Mr. Homebrew Shop Owner. Yeah. We want to smell your hops because I can I can smell underneath it like the lovely orange <laughs> tropical things happening, but yes. uh, that that kerosene deal I can't. Yeah, let's get rid of that. I can't get past. No, you know what chemical that is. You're that you forbidden be... to use it from now on. <laughs> Well, you I didn't put it. any in the coal, so I'll be safe there. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank uh, you for that one. Yeah. No, that I, I had two ounces left in my freezer, and I was like, what the heck am I going to use this for? So yeah. that's the – that's I was, you know, I'm just trying to look in to see what I can use and throw in to try to blend and, and make something work. But, I mean, I could – like you said, they, with or without it, um, with it's such a small it. amount. I re- really think overall it wouldn't wouldn't have made a huge difference to anyone except JP. There well, is a lot true. else going on. Well, and, and also, if I've learned anything else from doing this show for so long, is that less can be more, especially with hops. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't muddle things up with too many different flavors of hops. You know, you get a couple, uh, maybe maybe three complementary hops, and that's about it. I would keep it kind of on the simple side. Um, you, have a, you have a great combination of aromas and flavors in, in here, and and, uh, and I hate double IPAs. I hate IPAs. I think they're terrible. But this beer is is very well balanced, and, and people go, you that's supposed to be balanced. It's IPA. Okay, asshole. It's a balance for the style. It's balanced <laughs> for the, the double IPA style. Right. I think you did a great job putting yeah. this beer together. I it's really hoppy, do. and it dries out, so you can still taste those hops in the aftertaste. And, and it's you can, sweet you can drink and it, warming. And, it. and Yeah, it's really it's good. Easy to, easy to yeah, put I don't, down. I don't like 90%. Of anything. Uh, no, of, of, I, of IPAs, yeah. basically doubles, triples, whatever you want to call them. I, I, this is in the 10% that I do like. It's real good. Are you going to yeah. enter this at all, John, or have you entered this? You should. You should. Um, <laughs> um, got, I, I guess I got to find a competition to get it in somewhere. I didn't enter it into the National Homebrews Competition. I don't know. <laughs> where do you Where do you live? I live in Bakersfield. Okay. Oh. Oh, and you were going to come up here for this show? What are you What are you crazy? Huh? Well, well, it, hey, it gets him out of I, Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know what the best part of Bakersfield is. Now I'm leaving it. <laughs> Just kidding, John. No, no, I I uh, I worked in the oil field and was laid off. So man, I got I don't have anything else better to do. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, I'd rather come over and see you guys in person and have a beer. Yeah, did you get a discount on gas? Uh, I, yeah. Everyone is right now. I'm di- I'm <laughs> yeah, <diesel>. exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, well, yeah, uh, come up sometime. Sorry, well, John. Before like, we like get maybe, too far, afield. like maybe next week, can come up for the beer fest. Are you, yeah, you, you going to come up for the beer fest and bring a keg um, of that double IPA? You should, Ooh. man. Uh, we we'll get you into Tasty's tasting room. Oh, yeah. there we go. Now yeah. we're talking. If you have a keg or whatever, yeah, we can definitely put you on there. Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I think I well, I've drank quite a bit of this double IPA keg, so <laughs> maybe I should save it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you don't want to save it for too long, man. It's, it's still an IPA. You want to drink that thing. Oh, he, no, he's talking about saving for another week so he can bring it up. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, well, geez, I brewed it on. Uh, February fourteenth, so it it it's a little over a month old. It, it's practically ready to drain pour. <laughs> oh no! All right. No. Uh, well, before we get too far afield, John, do you have any questions for these guys? Um, I I did have a kind of a question when I when I'm dry hopping. Um, so typically I I when I do my dry hops on my IPAs, I'll let it sit for maybe I usually do one, and I'll let it sit for maybe four days, three four days, and then I'll cold crash for for a few days as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is, is that for you guys, is, does that sound about right? I mean, for a, for a dry hopping schedule. So, I mean, it may be, maybe seven days, six, seven days. In I, a think, keg. I think three or four days is yeah. probably, are you rousing it at all? Or like blow some CO2 in there, like through the import? Well, do you, I, I use a bag, so I, yeah. I put it in there for that and I pull it out after four days and then 
it depends on what the if I'm going to be dry hopping, I'm going to do it again. Yeah, oh. I'm going to I'm going to do two separate sessions. So okay. like four days and four days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll pull out the one and then I'll I'll put the other one because I don't want it to get grassy. So I'd rather mm-hmm. do shorter times on the beer. And spend more on the hops to and, make it also, good. Yeah, I can, okay. I can do that. You can do that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Or you just put in double the hops. and No, nah, it has to sit on there. It just gets too grassy. I don't want to yeah. do that once. I'm more worried about that issue. Yeah, okay. that's that's kind of my concern when I'm when I'm doing it. I, I don't I don't use bags. I use a speedo fermenter, so I usually just toss everything in. But um, I'll definitely have to look into some bags, and that way I can yeah, to, like set it set it in there for three days and pull it that's, like Doc said. Yeah, I, yeah. and I usually throw a, a stainless steel something that I have, uh, <laughs> uh, like a, you know, like a tri clover uh, clamp or exactly some, okay, or something right. in, into the bag so it sinks to the bottom, so yeah. it's not just floating on the top. Yeah. Okay, so no well, lead weights. Got it. Sounds like John's, John's got plenty of stainless steel around, so he'll be fine. There. Right. Just, build uh, yeah. a, just build a torpedo so you can just research yeah, yeah. through it. It'll be great. Yeah, I'll just grab one. Um, yeah. The one one thing I did want to say is I actually used the Kolsch yeast on this beer. Oh, um, really? All right. That, that may have that may have changed, may have added a little difference to it, but uh, it, it was an um, interesting fermentus to it. Yeah. Fermentus K97. Okay. Um, yeah. They're German ale Kolsch yeast. I actually, it's wow. the same yeast I used on the Kolsch, so... It worked. Um, it, it dried it out nicely, and and you, some sugars in there too, right? You put some yeah. Corn so the malt sugar. bill, I I didn't go over the malt bill, but it's um about eighty. What was it? Eighty six percent two row, four percent C forty, four percent carapil, six percent dextrose. Cool. That's a pretty good. Pretty good bill. It's not bad. It works. So how did your, how did your coals turn out? We'll be judging that. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out next month. Same yeast, which I should have brought to this one, but I was yeah. panicked. I'm, I'm not kind when I when I judge that. Did you did you put it on the yeast cake from the IPA or no no no? no. no. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did a double IPA to build up my coal yeast. <laughs> That's how you do it, right? That's right. Yeah, I made it strong, <laughs> strong like bull. Uh, okay, John, that was it, man. Cool. Thanks, Thanks, buddy. I, I appreciate the feedback. Of course. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. sending in beers, man. Yeah, it was, it, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, for sure. Cool. We'll Thanks, see you at the, really the brew fest. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Thanks, John. All right. Have a good one, guys. All right. You too. Nice guy. All right. That's we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to go blah, 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 and then we're going to leave. It's Dr. Homebrew. Stay Sweet. tuned. Stay tuned for our blah, blah, blah after uh, this. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit FiveStarChemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019. And get the Five star treatment today admit it homebrewing is not always free of frustrations years ago brothers bill and jim mitchell decided to minimize those frustrations and create an entirely new brewing process and a brand new kitchen appliance the pico brew zymatic the zymatic sits on your kitchen counter and connects to the internet via wi-fi it comes with access to a huge recipe library full of award-winning beers and can brew your next batch at the push of a button improve repeatability and refine your recipes with the Pico Brew Zymatic. With minimal cleaning and hassle, the Zymatic enables anyone to brew craft beer in the comfort of their own kitchen. Just add your ingredients and the process of home brewing becomes simplified and automatic, allowing you to focus on what really matters while you brew. At Pico Brew, they believe everyone should be able to enjoy the art of home brewing and make their own damn good craft beer. See the Zymatic in action today at PicoBrew.com. I'm sorry to tell you this, but we're going to have to pour you out. Back to Dr. Homebrew.
All right, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Everybody. We have a $40 gift certificate to give away. How much? $40. That's a lot. Of dollars. 40. To grogtag.com. Oh. Our friends at grogtag.com. It is the grogtag $40 at least your beer will look good gift certificate. I like that. I like it, too. That's yeah. their tagline. At least your beer will look good because, you know, I was talking to Todd about it. And he goes, look, our homebrew is kind of shit. And uh, at least we wanted it to look good, and we thought, well, that's our It definitely goes up thing. a couple of points when it looks good. It does, right? Like, oh, this is a thing, right? You're, you're yeah. serving off of this, like, crappy bottle that's got, like, stuff hanging off of it. It's my homebrew. <laughs> yeah. Nobody really wants to drink it, but it's on this spick and span bottle with your face on the label. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It goes up. It definitely goes up. Well, the especially the flavor point. The labels are, are reusable. Oh, yeah. That, to me, is a bonus. Peel a um, stick. And, you know, we've gotten, Brian, we've gotten a couple uh, bottles where it's there's still the original, like, craft beer label on yeah. it. Yeah. Or Coors Light. Or, yeah. yeah. Oh, or, yeah. Like, it's, I think someone gave us, like, a Sam Adams bottle. Sam Adams, yeah. And I'm like, oh, already this is going to be shit because it's... it's it, they didn't clean the bottle off. It's contaminated. Or you, you, it's just, you already think if they didn't clean the outside, they didn't clean the inside. <laughs> right, right. You've already colored the impression of the beer. Right? Exactly. Uh-huh. And so why not make that impression only three a positive points. one? It's only three points. <laughs> <laughs> but what's inside of it also. I know. You know, like, uh, who sent us the pale ale? I forget, but it's like sticky label. I'm like, come on. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very weird. Well, then we had that the pecan beer a couple shows ago where, they, you know, the guy had a pretty cool, like, Jean Luc. He had his Picard. own label. Jean Luc yeah. Pecan. Pecan yeah. beer. That was a cool label. And I it, it yeah. stepped it up a little. And it had a wax sealed top. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I got the extra bottle that I saw. I was in all in. I showed it to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric, uh, you know, you got a. Well, I don't know if your bottle still had it, but I think maybe the. Um, There's some mung on your. The, <laughs> oh, you got a little sticky. <laughs> well, I think it was the sticky uh, bubble wrap. We and then make... he wrapped it in it to, like, secure it, which is a great thought, but it, it, it makes touching the bottle very gross. No, these are these 500 mil bottles that are the ones that have like the labels Pliny. that are hard to get off. Like, I think they're Pliny uh, bottles. And sometimes yeah, the um, yeah. uh, like the racer five labels are hard to get off. There's certain ones that leave that stick on them, just like that. I don't know. So can PBW. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're getting far field. Look the, at you. The winner of the forty dollar grog tag, at least your beer will look good. Gift certificate is Eric. Yeah. Yes. There we go, Eric. And the winner of JP's admiration and eternal love is John. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody wins that. Uh, yeah, Eric, so we'll, you'll get a, uh, an email shortly here from the folks at Grog Tag where, uh, you know, you can spend your 40 bucks. And then for those of you who are interested in making your own labels, coasters, metal signs, tasting mats, keg labels. Uh, Starting um, to make tap handles. Tap handles. All that kind of stuff, man. They do Grogtag.com. Cool stuff. Bottle caps. Do yeah. your whole thing, man. I'll, like fit, I'll, fit, I'll fit your whole program. You have a man. fully coordinated bottle from cap to label to oh, everything. You, got the, you have the neck tag and everything. And you can have the sign hanging in your garage when you pour it for your friends. Everything. And there's people who do that, which is awesome. I mean, if you're going to dial in, if you're going to dial in your entire friggin' you know, brewery, okay, your, your whole brand, brewery, your brand. You, might as, you might as well just do it right. Yeah. And the bottle, the labels are usable. So why that's why not? commercial beer sells. I mean, I've had so much good homebrew. I don't know why, but you know, yeah, right. So it just looks good. So you buy it. Better to look good. Than but this, you make at least it, your beer will look good. It looks good. Yeah, and it tastes good. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot, <laughs> Eric and John. I appreciate you guys sending us some beers. Um, I had a lot of fun, Doc Brian. I appreciate you guys joining me for another episode of Doctor Homebrew, and for all of you listening at home, be good to each other. Uh.